I think one of the key takeaways is that increasing soybean meal, particularly in the corn soy diets, we saw improvements in feed efficiency and some in average daily gain. And when we had DDGs in the diet, if we got too high in soybean meal, got into diets with 25 to 28% crude protein, we tended to see a drop off uh, uh, in performance. But again, in the corn soy based diets, uh, uh, the interactions may not have been statistically significant, but we generally saw improvements in growth performance. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Bed Podcast, where we explore the science behind swine nutrition. I'm your host, Jorge Estrada. And today in our podcast, we have two very special guests. Dr. Bob Goodman, a distinguished professor at Kansas State University, and Dr. Omar Mendoza, Director of Nutrition with the Mashups, a large integrator in the U.S. In this edition brought to you by U.S. Soy, Drs. Bob Goodban from KSU and Omar Mendoza with the Moshoffs joins us to discuss the results and commercial implications of a collaborative study that focused on determining the minimum soybean meal inclusion with and without DDGS to optimize growth, performance, and carcass characteristics in both growing and finishing pig diets. Listen in to hear more about how the study results can be applied to a commercial system and what further research is needed. Today, we will discuss the effects of increasing soybean meal in swine diets with or without DDGs on performance and carcass trait. Dr. Goodman, Dr. Mendoza, welcome to the podcast. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. I uh, appreciate you having us today. All right. Well, let's dive into today's topics. And Dr. Goodman, let's start with you. Could you please provide us an overview of the collaborative research that you have been conducting between Kansas State University, University of Missouri, and the mashups? Yes. Uh, like I said, I uh, want to thank everybody, Omar and Caleb Schull, for their, present, their contributions to the project, Amy Petrie at the University of Missouri, and I also don't want to forget Aaron Gaines and Dean Boyd, who really came up with the concept of putting together a project between commercial production and universities. So they deserve a, sh a shout out too. Uh, but in terms of the project, uh, what we looked at were increasing levels of soybean meal in diets with or without DDGs in the early finishing phase and then the late finishing phase. And so uh, a range of increasing soybean meal uh, corn soy diets or uh, corn soy DDG based diets. Can you give us some of the key takes away, takes aways of that research? Yeah, I think one of the key takeaways is that increasing soybean meal, particularly in the corn soy diets, we saw improvements in feed efficiency and some in average daily gain. And when we had DDGs in the diet, if we got too high in soybean meal, got into diets with 25 to 28% crude protein, we tended to see a drop off uh, uh, in performance. But again, in the corn soy based diets, uh, uh, the interactions may not have been statistically significant, but we generally saw improvements in growth performance. So, Dr. Goodman, you are thinking a little bit on the so if you increase DDGs and soybean meal at the same time, that might be overwhelming to the pig, maybe? Yes. If we go very high levels of soybean meal in the diet, almost exclude any synthetic amino acids, just literally corn, soybean meal, and DDGs to meet the pig's requirements, we tended to see a drop-off uh, when in the DDG based diets, but not so much in the in the corn soy diets. And then, you know, thinking about some of the research that you guys have conducted before at the uh, Kansas State University, how does it compare to these results? 
Actually, a lot of our results are relatively similar. Uh, we saw improvements with increasing soybean meal, and surprisingly to us, uh, that's coming up consistent with some recent studies, we saw a little bit of a decrease in performance in the DDG-based diets. And our hypothesis is that maybe as they remove more and more oil from the DDGs, the uh, you know, 20 to 30 percent DDGs that we've added in the past without seeing changes in performance. Uh, maybe we need to reevaluate those levels. Yeah, it's been a while since, you know, a lot of research has been done on that topic, right? So, um, and regarding maybe following with that same line, and, and before we turn this to Dr. Mendoza, any thoughts regarding an additional research that might be needed in this topic? Yeah. Uh, again, as I mentioned, uh, we saw linear improvements, and so maybe what's happening at the low end, uh, are we getting our lysine to crude protein ratio too wide, and at the high end, are we getting it too low? And so uh, I like to refer to things to stay out of the ditches, not too low, not too high, kind of stay in the middle range. Excellent. Well, thanks for that, Dr. Goodman. Well, Dr. Mendoza, let's turn this into you, sir. Um, thinking about, you know, what's the value of this kind of research for a system like the Mashups? What do you think about that? Yes, I think this is uh, critical information for production nutritionists, uh, uh, for the fact that we were trained to formulate diets to meet the amino acid needs of the animal. Uh, however, it seems like there are some differences when you look at uh, formulating diets with high levels of DEGS versus corn soy diets. Even though we were meeting the nutrient requirements, the amino acid needs, seems like at those levels of DEGS, as Dr. Goodman uh, alluded to, you know, there are some compromises in growth performance. So certainly, uh, important research. And also this study aimed to answer the question, you know, how much sodium milk we can display by the use of crystalline amino acids. And it seems like there's got to be a minimum of soy in the diet. So certainly adding to the research uh, and the body of literature. And I don't think we are done, uh, especially in that late finishing uh, stage. Uh, that is important to understand. I, and the mashups, you guys have a, a long history conducting commercial trials, right? So has your group conducted previous trials on this topic? I mean, how do they compare, if so? Yeah, we have looked at uh, soybean meal levels, increasing soybean meal levels, and by default also increasing crude protein levels. But as we saw in this trial, uh, feed efficiency uh, indeed improved. Uh, certainly one of the uh, key takeaways was the DEGS effect. Uh, in previous studies, we had seen DEGS perform equal to diets uh, constructed with soybean meal. However, there was an interesting response, uh, especially in uh, late finishing, where the DEGS-based diets did have reduced gain. Um, also, the DEGS-based uh, diets had reduced feed efficiency. However, that was not surprising as those diets were also lower in dietary energy, but that gain response is certainly something that warrants more research. Excellent. So, I mean, on, the, on that same line and, and thinking about, you know, maybe caloric efficiency or, you know, cost, I mean, how how can we apply this kind of research for a system like the mashups? Yeah, certainly. I think we need to continue to evaluate uh, the cost competitiveness of DEGS, its relationship to corn and soybean meal. Uh, there's times of the year where sobe, when where sobe meal and or DHS, uh, it is uh, cheap enough. Uh, however, I think it's a uh, uh, situation specific. Each producer and each system's got to evaluate uh, those relationships. And also, I think a critical aspect of this is understanding how the marketing system is working for that producer and also the time of the year. There are times of the years where we're going to value average daily gain more so, example, summer. So uh, uh, the questions from this research are, you know, we, do we need to look at uh, this time of the year differently? And perhaps 
if we want to drive gain, uh, we got to take a look at those DHS levels. You know, I'm not saying a complete removal, but certainly seems like there's merit in increasing soybean meal levels, uh, especially in that late finishing stage. Well, it's, 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 it's great to learn that we, we still have a lot to um, understand, you know, when, when it comes down to DDGs and soybean meal, a couple of ingredients that we have been using for, for many years in soy nutrition. Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have today. So, uh, Dr. Goodman, thank you very much for uh, being with us today. Great, thank you very much. Dr. Mendoza, same for you. We appreciate your time. Thanks for your insights. Thank you for the invitation. Everyone, thanks for listening to the Strine Nutrition Black Bed Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us some comments. Join us in our next episode.